So is Civi CRM the right CRM for your organization? So this is a question that I get asked constantly and I'm constantly answering questions from potential clients and clients about various technologies. It's sort of what I'm doing on a regular basis. So just some initial thoughts and I'm, um, I've been working in software selection processes for a long, long time. Um, I'm really not here to rubber stamp Civi, and, uh, but it does do extremely well when we do comparisons between different software products in this, in, in this space. Um, these are my opinions. These are not necessarily the opinions of every software consultant, every Civi consultant, or the Civi core team. So I'm going to give you my thoughts and some, some comparison products out there. We do do work with other software besides Civi. So we've got uh, implementation experience across a wide range of softwares. Um, I believe that most online comparison sites are pretty useless um, or they're old. The only one that I would, I think is good is the Idealware site. Have, has anyone ever gone there to Idealware? N10 sponsors. Um, does everyone know who N10 is? So N10 is a, is a national organization that, uh, um, for technology for nonprofits, and they sponsor various um, comparisons. They've just, they do one on CRMs, they do one on content management systems, um, a lot of different software. And that's pretty good. Um, it's pretty um, ro robust, and that's a very good place to get an idea of what are the 50, 60, 80 options and narrowing it down maybe to 10 or 10 or 12. So has anyone recently done a comparison study between Civi CRM and any other CRMs? Read over here. Um, so Civi can be used across a lot of different or organizations, grassroots, cause-based, associations, foundations, political groups, um, many different types of organizations, um, rel relatively small to relatively large, international developing nations. Um, Cause there's not a lot of people here. What, what areas are you from? So I can maybe focus on those a, a, a little bit more. So You're a developer? Yeah, we work with Civi. So. Okay. And you guys are all developer or a nonprofit? I know you, you, you're, you're at work for the nonprofit, Benjamin. Are you, are you with the? I work with a nonprofit, but, but okay. I help them implement it. Okay. So which, which, which type work with uh, nonprofit? I guess it would be um, cause, you know, for us, a cause based. Cause based. Okay. Food and, you know, financial services. Okay. Like that. Okay, great. So, um, I said there's a lot of different competitive options in sort of each area, and people look at different, different softwares depending on what your specific needs are. So the first question that I always have when someone asks me, um, I'm, I'm interested in, in implementing Civi CRM, or um, I'm interested in doing a software selection process, I ask them, all right, do you understand what this open source thing is? Do you understand what that, what that means? Um, Actually, I wrote an article for N10 this summer about what does it mean to choose an open source uh, CRM. And um, some of the key points that um, people learn sort of by banging their heads over the years, I think, is one is open source and nonprofits, well, they're a perfect fit, right? You think, I've seen people say, I have to use an open source solution because we're a nonprofit, open source doesn't make any money, why would I want to go to these evil for-profit <laughs> firms? And I've seen people make a selection on that alone. Um, generally not the best choice for you. Um, open source is not free. It may have no cost associated, but it's, it's free like kittens, right? So it's free to, to, to bring it home, but it's not free to keep it um, fed and cared for the whole time. But hopefully it brings you enjoyment most of their lives. Um, and just hoping it's going to be less expensive because it's free and open source doesn't make it so. And there are absolutely cases when open source is significantly more expensive than in a high priced commercial system. Um, this is a really big one and we probably get uh, back office thinking at least half of our work because of well-intentioned experts implementing Civi CRM that really should not be in this space. But because it's open source and even though there is a partner program and I encourage everyone 
to either become a partner or a member if you're part of a, a nonprofit organization. But I always say, is, you know, if you've got someone who's local or someone on your board or, you know, a, a, a committee member's you know, son or daughter who loves technology, it's like there's a good chance there's going to be a lot of problems. Um, I was just at a client the other day, and it was my first meeting with them, and they were having all of these problems with duplicates. Every single thing they, every single entry they put in the system was, was a duplicate almost. So I went and looked at their rules for duplicate, and it was set to external identifier, the only thing. So they've never not put a duplicate in the system. Every single new contact that signed up gave them a donation. So they implemented a few months back. They've got a little more than 10,000 duplicates that they know about. I'm guessing they probably got 50,000. Because they were pretty sure that some of them weren't duplicates, but I'm pretty sure all of them were, have been duplicates. <laughs> Um, so their expert must have probably done an import, right, with using a external identifier from some other system and never changed it back, never looked, never tested, and has now created a huge issue for them. So this is probably one of the most important things, is be aware of these well-intentioned experts with open source. Uh, make sure that they've actually done this before in something similar or as complicated as what you have done. Um, I like to think of open source software as a platform and a commercial product as an apartment building. So open source is a platform that you can build on. Depending on the technology, CiviCRM has got a ton of functionality, but basically it's a, it's a platform. You look at something, and I'll get into like a Salesforce, think of it as a giant apartment building. You get one apartment, okay? You can change the wallpaper, but you can't change the plumbing. Um, you only have so many resources at that apartment building that you can use and you can't just go out and get more as easily as you can with a platform solution like Civi, Civi CRM. So that's one of the big, di big distinctions between open source and, and commercial. And then there's always, what about support? Well, everyone says, well, you know, there's free support online, you can find contractors, people can understand it, but it will cost you money and if you don't budget for that, then um, you are fooling <coughs> yourselves. If you're fortunate enough and have an expert on staff, then your costs will be extremely low. But if that expert, if this is their first implementation, they're going to need some help. And not to budget for that is a big, is, is a big issue. What about Civi CRM versus other open source CRMs? And we, we, I get this question a lot too. First of all, Sugar, has anyone ever implemented Sugar? It's a great product, not for this space, okay? If you're interested in running a small sales company or a, a company that's selling widgets or you've got sales, it works very, very well. It's a good alternative to Salesforce, but certainly not in this space. And I don't think there's really any other open source really worth even talking about here. There's a few of them out there. Has anyone run into any? There's some, there's some modules in Drupal or um, extensions out, out there for WordPress, but nothing that has any of the breadth um, that what um, that CiviCRM has. Like, with the exception of some point solutions around e-commerce. So if you just want an event or you just want a donation and you really don't want a CRM, this, some of these could be a, a, a solution for you. That makes sense? Okay. Other thing is free versus open source. Well, Salesforce is free for nonprofits, right? And um, you've got Drupal Commerce, which is free, and you've got Magento that gives you a free version, okay? So, well, I think we talked about earlier, Rick was mentioning, well, Salesforce is great, except for the fact that it really doesn't come built in with any online donation stuff, so you've gotta go got, get that extension. There are some free ones, and there are some expensive ones. What if you wanna do um, better integration with your website? Well, that's gonna cost a fair amount of custom code, and a lot more than what it's gonna cost for Civi CRM, because Civi already integrates almost flawlessly with WordPress and with Drupal. So when you're having the open source dis dis discussion, it's really important to think about these items because it's not just a free software that because you're a nonprofit and it's open source, you guys are kindred spirits, it's gonna work for you, it's gonna be free, everything will just be perfect. Those implementations generally fail um, and then someone, maybe someone in this room gets, gets the call, be, be 
because of that failure, but it's definitely a problem. All right, so let's talk about the CiviCRM strengths. I'm not going to go into all the different functionalities. I think a lot of people, probably everyone, everyone here knows these things. So it's very broad based. It's got a variety of tools where most of the other AMSs, CRMs do not. I mean, between mass mailing and events and memberships and reminders and activities and cases and grants and the pace of which these um, extensions are emerging and the, ev the evolution of speed of the platform is in it's phenomenal. It's the best that I can see in the industry. And Salesforce is spending bazillions of dollars on this. Some of it's going into the nonprofit space, but not that much. So people can say, oh, there's all this other work being done, and there's definitely venture capitalists out there supporting some of it, and I'll go into a, a, a few of them. But the evolution of speed here, it, the speed of the evolution is just really, really strong, and it's because of the community. Um, it's a platform solution, which I talked about earlier, and that's a big strength. For smaller nonprofits without s sophisticated needs, it pretty much works out of the box. And if you're a large nonprofit that has very sophisticated needs, you can really do a lot to make this thing exactly the way you want it. Sometimes when and we're talking with larger clients and we're comparing different solutions, what it comes down to is if you really want exactly what you want and you know you're going to have to customize this thing, use a platform solution because you're going to be able to do it and maintain it a lot better. If you think an upgrade of Civi because of some customizations is expensive, wait till you try to do that on some of these commercial platforms. A lot more expensive. Also, the integration with Drupal and WordPress, it is by far the best, hands down, not even close. There's nothing that even comes close to comparison today. And that is becoming more and more important, especially with things like we talked about private social networks and areas where people can log in and see, see different things. So this, is, this strength has always been there and it's going to be more and more important. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask whenever. Or if you're just bored, you can leave them. So other platforms. Has anyone ever heard of Nation Builder? Has anyone here ever implemented Nation Builder? Does anyone know what Nation Builder is? Okay. So they're a new kid on the block with a lot of money. Venture backed. I don't know. I forget their last round of funding, but I think they've gotten like 20, 30 million dollars, maybe 40 million dollars worth of funding. They started out in the political space and now they're moving into the nonprofit space. There are some things that are really good. They've got their ease of implementation. You really don't need anyone technical at all for their implementation. Um, their, their UI um, is the way that, that integrates and everything sort of looks together. It's really well done. Um, they have a really simple data model. So if you're complex, there's no way you can do what you want to do. You want to get out, and the ability to handle um, some like com the complexity around finance or around events or around donations is just not there. I'm not saying it's not going to be there in two or three years, but as of right now, it's not even close. Um, it is very in inexpensive, and the integration, uh, I probably should say, with um, social media is, is excellent. It's the best out there on the marketplace that I've seen. So if, if integration with, with social media, a quick install without any technical expertise with extremely limited needs, it's a good option. It's a very good option. Anyone have any questions on Nation Builder? What does the social media integration look like? Does it pull data for context, like history, as, a, as a, like the recent activity in, on social it's, it, it, That and also, um, it also shows you, if they give you permission, you can go out to their, their contacts as well. So you can really increase your network a lot. Which nonprofits love that, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, people say Salesforce. What does that mean? Oh my god. Salesforce is not just one solution. So is everyone here familiar with Salesforce at least a, a little bit? OK. So basically, there's, there's three levels. There's this thing called Nonprofit Starter Pack, which you probably heard a lot of. That's the, uh, done by the Salesforce Foundation. It's getting a lot better. And basically, it turns Salesforce and twists it around 
and it presents the UI in a way that makes sense for nonprofits. Fundamental database structure is still a for-profit CRM. It is twisting the user interface. For some nonprofits, that's fine. But it's clear it does not have out of the box nearly the functionality that Civi CRM does. And it doesn't have any online features. You can purchase or you can utilize Salesforce App Exchange apps to, uh, I think I'm down there somewhere, to, um, to augment some of that, but it's never going to be quite the same as what Civi does for you. But tell you what, some people say, you know what, I'm afraid of open source. I, I, I can't spend any money. There's, uh, so Salesforce is, is an option for them. There is really no cost uh, once the solution is running. It is a SaaS model. You don't have to pay anything for your first 10 licenses of Salesforce. If you need more than that, then you have to pay, but you get an 80% discount. I think that comes out to like $45 a month per user or something, something like that. Um, not a, you know, we've got clients that run Salesforce. This is a, this is a very good solution, um, but not nearly the breadth uh, of scope of what Civi gives you. There's other mid-tier solutions, and there's also high-end solutions. These mid-tier solutions, um, th most of them are new, right? Because Salesforce opened up the force.com platform for people to develop, and people are developing like crazy. That platform is rock solid, really strong, phenomenal. But just because these guys are on the Salesforce platform doesn't necessarily mean their code is Salesforce and rock solid. And the Salesforce put some things in there, but you know, there are bugs in these implementations, just like there's bugs in sort of open source software. So don't get fooled by the fact that this is a commercial product. It's going to be much cleaner. It's definitely not Salesforce. Some of the real high ends, like Nimble AMS, Fontiva, Roundclaws, has anyone heard of those? So Salesforce has sort of picked Roundclaws as like its winner in the, for, in the nonprofit space. You'll probably hear more and more of that. Um, but the implementation, the average implementation, um, is sixty to $80,000. Which one is that? Roundclaws. Round sixty to $80,000. Cause view is probably lower. I'm going to guess in the $20,000 range, but you're not going to get anything in less expensive than that. So if you're looking for smaller implementations, none of these are going to cut it. Things like Fontiva and Nimble AMS start at about eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollar implementations. So the comparison, um, these tools, um, especially these guys over here, are really well structured. My round cause is, is sort of new. I don't really know. I haven't seen a lot of long term comparisons on that. But some of these are extremely strong, but they're very expensive. And if your model fits what fits what they're doing, then they're a good choice, and you should definitely consider them. Um, the strengths across any of these Salesforce products is they have excellent and easy reporting. I mean, how many times if you're a consultant, like, I can't get this report out of the system. You know, it's very, very hard. And we've done some things with Jasper, and we're looking at other tools, or do you, you do a custom search or whatever, but it's, it's a constant uh, complaint. And it's, and it's getting better, right? But it's still hard. So it's got excellent reporting tools. And Salesforce has Civi Case, and it's got some activities, but it doesn't really have workflow built in. You can't do one thing, which then triggers something else, which then triggers something else. Salesforce has that. So if these, it's also got, I said, this great app exchange app with uh, like a, an excellent volu volunteer extension, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. So, you should look at this, and if reporting, and especially if workflow is important to you, um, the using a force.com platform app is, is not a bad choice. Um, none of these integrate like Civi CRM into your content management system. Not even close. Okay? Um, most of these, like Cause View and Round Cause, they have install bases in the maybe 100, 150. So they're small. Right? So when Civi had install base of 100, 150, think how much more it's evolved. How much, are, how much more are these guys going to learn over the years as they continue to grow? They've all got you know, a lot of money behind them. So they're advertising like crazy. They're fixing bugs. But they're, right now, you are really helping them with their development package, to be honest with you, right? Because you are a very new user. Uh, not true of, um, of Fontiva. Um, does that? 
Does that help on Salesforce at all? Does that make sense? Okay. The next area is our favorite. <laughs> is uh, Blackboard, and of course we run into these guys all the time. Does anyone know what RE stands for? Does anyone any idea what that might be? Mm -hmm. Razor's Edge, sort of the, the mother, the father, the grandfather, the godfather of all development software, where you know an organization's been using that for the last 20 years, and you're going to have to kill the development director to change. <laughs> um, if if if. Just to give you a little history on Blackboard, how they operate is I call purchase, rinse, and repeat. <laughs> so Razor's Edge has been their flagship product for forever. Okay? It, it does not do online fundraising well. And Blackboard does have some products to make it a little bit better. But overall, it's pretty expensive. And the functionality, if you compare how it looks with some of the other products, it's just not that good. Um, so what does Blackboard constantly do? They're constantly purchasing new vendors, like they purchased Kintera a few years ago, or several years ago now, and that product is sort of, you know, drifted and venture. It's not dead, but y if you were to call up Blackboard and talk to one of their customer service people, you they never mention Kintera to you, ever. Um, they've also bought Convio a couple years ago. They're sort of the, they were the up and comers, and they've got they had three products. They had what most people call Convio 360, their original product. They had, um, oh god, I'm drawing a blank. Um, they had Luminate and they had Ground. Uh, um, hmm? No. Um, I'm going to call it Ground, but I know that that's wrong. Um, so after so many days that Blackboard purchased them, they said, oh, Common Ground. It was close. Com common Ground. And Luminate was their flagship. It was built on Salesforce. Um, really strong product. It started out as Common Ground. They split Common Ground, added a bunch of BI and some other really cool features, and featured Luminate. Then um, when Blackboard bought it, they said, well, we don't want Common Ground. It's not, it's not going to get us, the, I'm not sure exactly why, but my opinion is that it's not going to get us the revenue that we want on these installs. So anyone who's on common ground, we're not supporting it in 90 days. Come to Luminate. Spend $100,000. Um, that has been a big benefit to a lot of these other CRMs that are out there who just went crazy on these different products. Not a lot of these people moved to Civi, but we've got a few organizations that moved from Kintera and a few that moved to, from Convio um, from, to CVCRM. Um, Luminate's a great product, but it's expensive. We did a, um, a software selection project this spring where the products came down to Razors, um, excuse me, a, a suite of Blackboard products, Salesforce with, I forget which one it was. Um, I think it was Roundcause, um, and CVCRM and Neon. And although in the end, the Illuminate product was by far the most expensive with, with the other, it was the Blackboard suite of, suite of products. The organization chose Blackboard because they felt that that was what the board would allow them to do. They, it came down to, and the executive director told me, he's like, I, you know, I don't want to get fired for this decision, and I'm not, I, we have the money, and we're going to spend it, and this is the right cost. Now, it's not a bad product, don't get me wrong, but I don't think for this organization there was anything that they needed this it was going to be, you know, $100,000 implementation for. Um, other CRMs out there, Neon Salsa, there's a lot of them. In general, I'm not a big fan of sort of these small software companies unless they have the backing to grow or they have a particular niche. Salsa is a really good example. They do advocacy extremely well. That's their niche. So we have one client that has Civi CRM for most of what they do. They purchase a small Salsa license to do their advocacy their advocacy from. Not, not that unusual, and we're actually talking with them a little, a little bit, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere, but well, can we do some real in integration you know, at the API level? Um, um, I'm not sure it's really gonna, gonna go anywhere though. Um, and Neon is very popular, and it's pretty inexpensive. It's got a, a good general set of features. Um, 
you know, but again, there, these, these install bases are significantly smaller than most of the uh, Salesforce or the uh, Civi products. Question? Mm -hmm. Typical. Typical. That's more than most, but it depends on what they're doing. So, ha, ha. Very hmm. <laughs> oh, um, I'm sure the the salesperson's getting a nice bonus for that. But uh, yeah, that's again is with Blackboard and Convio now part of that um, in the same house is it's very expensive. Um, it's the biggest, the most popular. They sponsor tons of events, they're everywhere, and you are generally not going to get fired if you're an executive director by putting that in. But that's the, the more cost because of, of an annual cost. That's higher than most that I've seen, yes. Um, but it can, it, it's not out of the question. Um, I would say more common is in the twenty to $40,000 range. They may have been doing something special. Were, were they doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? No, at the time. This okay. Years ago. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, because one of the things that a lot of these products, and I didn't put it up here, is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, right? Civi's got a, a good product. I wouldn't say it's spectacular, but it's solid, and it's free. It's part of the install. Um, most of these other packages don't have it, or they charge you a pretty hefty percentage above the credit card fees for processing, 3 4%. So it sounds like it's free until you add up the dollars. So if you're raising a million dollars in a peer-to-peer, -peer, you've got hidden costs of thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. And you know, every year, that's just money that you're paying to maintain the software. Where in Civi, you don't have to pay that at all. So if you think about it, if it's going to cost you $30,000 to create this phenomenal peer-to-peer -peer fundraising network through, through Civi, is it worth it compared to paying every year thirty dollars to $40,000 for a lot of these other other products. Now, I'll admit, their products are slick, and sometimes it's worth it, because you'll get 1.4 million instead of 1 million. And is that worth $30,000? Absolutely. But then you have to think, well, could I have done that any differently? Um, so it, it's, it's, it's an interesting choice. Association management software. Um, is anyone familiar with different AMS systems? Hmm? Vectra. Right. There are a ton of mid tier a AMS choices out there. And I don't think any of them have the breadth or the configurability of Civi CRM that I've seen. But they have some really good features. So Civi membership and events are good. But there are absolutely membership systems out there that have better features for memberships and better features around events. So what I'll talk with people when they come to us about, well, we're comparing this AMS with Civi. If they have the right feature set that you're looking for and you feel comfortable with a number of installs, I'm not really a big fan if someone has got 50 or 60 installs and you're helping them when they're developing still, um, then go with that. AMS, but if you're not sure, then let's compare Civi, Civi CRM. Um, there's also some really large AMS options, a vector being, they're like the uh, razor's edge of the AMS world, but the average implementation there, I don't know now, but I'm going to throw out the numbers of you know, $200,000, $300,000. So um, if you have extremely complex needs, and, and I don't think there's, there's many Civi implementations that are close to that cost. Okay. Um, there's you know, member nation, there's as association anywhere. These are, again, these are expensive. This one's actually from Frontiva. This is a Salesforce product, and that's um, built, on in, built on Oracle. Um, they're, they're good solutions, but they're very expensive, and they have very large yearly carrying costs to them, very large. But um, they are options for very large associations. I'm going to guess most large associations are not looking at Civi CRM. I've never, I shouldn't say that never, but very rarely will I be in, in a comparison where I'm comparing some of these a, a large AMSs with Civi. It, usually it's apples and oranges at that point. 
Um, okay. Okay, so is Civi the right choice for you? It is a great choice for main nonprofits. You gotta understand what open source means and what's the true cost. And you also need to understand this is a platform solution that's really important. Um, it's got a broad feature set and it's evolving and it has extremely strong integration with WordPress and with Drupal. Those are the key strengths. Usually it comes down to, I'll ask, you know, if you, other things like if you really want what you want and you're willing to, and you want to customize, this platform solution is huge if you're a larger nonprofit. If you're a smaller one, the fact that you can integrate and get some really cool functionality with integration with Drupal and with WordPress at a fraction of the cost, it's a really good product for you also. So, all right, that's all that I had. I'm not sure I can see everybody in the room, but does anyone have any questions? Comments? Was this at all helpful? Okay. All right. Thank you.